Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all having a lovely Friday afternoon. Today, I would like to discuss hate. There's a movie, Wall Street, and in the movie, Michael Douglas' character talks about why greed is good. It's a very popular speech, even though it is massively disliked, where he goes over some of the good things that can come from greed. And even though greed is typically seen as a negative thing, and oftentimes is a negative thing, there are some positives to be seen from greed. And today, I would like to discuss some of the positives that can be seen from hate. I see this term show up a lot, just over the past 18 months, more so than I think I've ever seen it in my life. Self-love, practicing self-love. And self-love is very different from self-care. Self-care is something that I think everybody should be into. Self-love, this is a different topic altogether. I think that you should strive to be somebody that you can love. But sometimes, just sometimes, a little bit of self-hate can go a long way. And I like to make the argument in favor of that and why self-love and care, you know, practicing self-love and loving yourself, why this all sounds great in a Hallmark card doesn't always work out in reality. Change is a very difficult thing for a lot of people, myself included. When you change, when you try something new, you are going to demonstrate that you are misinformed, uninformed, that you are weak in this particular skill set or activity. You are going to fail a lot when you try something new or when you change. You're going to be in unfamiliar territory, which is scary. People don't like feeling incompetent. They don't like failing, and they don't like being scared. So many people avoid change. If you've ever been to a support group or known somebody that goes to a support group for any sort of addiction, you'll know that many people do not change until they reach rock bottom. And sometimes you will fundamentally never be able to reach your friend until they actually hit rock bottom. But change is something that is very, very beneficial for a lot of people, particularly people that are on the wrong path in life. Now, sometimes you need a catalyst in order to get you to change. For some people, that's hitting rock bottom if they have a gambling or drug addiction. And for other people, that can be looking in the mirror and uttering the words, I hate you, to the person that they see in the mirror. Sometimes, hatred is a catalyst for positive change. When you are so sick and tired of what you see because you hate what you see that you are willing to do virtually anything possible to go on a different path. And sometimes, that can actually be a good thing. A catalyst that causes you to change in a manner that is beneficial for yourself, the people around you, your family, society, can be a good thing. There are two times in my life that I can just bring up on video where this has been helpful for me in particular. When I was around 19 years old, I had been working for about three and a half years at that point, and the place that I was working at was closing. I had gone to college and then stopped. I had tried a couple of different internships. I had tried a couple of different full-time jobs. And at the end of it, I was making anywhere from four to $600 a month. And uh, at the end of it, when I was laid off, the nothing. So like I had worked for three or four years. I didn't have a degree. I didn't have, you know, a, really, I, I just, I didn't have a real job. I didn't have any prospects or anything. And I would look in the mirror. And at one point, I just remember saying, I hate you. And that was a, not, not the best point in my life. But one of the things that came from it is a lot of introspection and change. And one of the things that I was really bad at was socialization. I'm a really socially awkward and weird dude right now. Anybody who's met me at any one of these legislative hearings or meetups or workshops that I do, that should be obvious. But I do have the ability to talk to people when need be. Back then, I... I didn't. The idea of walking up to a random person and starting a conversation was incredibly scary to me. And that was something that needed to change, particularly if I wanted to have my own business. It doesn't matter what level of skills you have. If you cannot interface with people, it's going to be very, very difficult to make it far in life. A big thing that was holding me back from being successful back then was the fact that I was fundamentally afraid to socialize and talk to other people. I wasn't just introverted. I was a person that just, like, I, I had this weird sense of pride and, like, I don't get along with people. Like, I turned my social awkwardness and the fact that I was introverted and the fact that I didn't know how to get along with others, I tried to turn it into a point of pride, which was a really dumb thing to do because when you close yourself off from the world, funny thing, the way this works, their money closes their way off from you. They close themselves off from being open to teaching you new things. They close themselves off from caring about whether or not you succeed. Or That was something that I badly needed to change. So what I did, when I've spoken about this in other videos, is I remember going to the store, getting myself a light blue polo shirt, going to the Apple store at 9th Avenue and 14th Street, and I would look for people that were standing by the Genius Bar walking away that seemed disgruntled. And I'd have a conversation with them. And at the end of it, I'd say, hey, you know, by the way, I don't work here. Your problem is the inverter board, not the screen assembly. I can replace that for 75 bucks. I know they told you 400, but that's bullshit. Here's my card. I work out of Herald Square Park. Uh, I didn't have an office at the time, and I couldn't meet people in my apartment because it was disgusting. So that was something that came out of me looking in the mirror and saying, I, I, can't stand, I can't stand you. I can't stand where I am. This is disgusting. I hate myself. Saying I hate myself doesn't sound like a healthy thing to do, but it is often a catalyst to a change. If I were to lie to myself in that moment and say, 
you haven't been successful in four years. You've been working your ass off 40 to 80 hours a week for four years. The most you ever made was $600 a month, and you, you, now you make nothing. I love myself. Like, I'm most likely not going to change my approach. I'm most likely not going to change what I'm doing. I'll keep doing the same thing. The catalyst to try something that was massively scary to me, as somebody that was socially awkward, introverted, did not want to deal with people, walking into a random store, talking to random strangers, selling them on something and handing them a business card, that wasn't going to happen without a serious catalyst. And for me, that was a very serious catalyst. I'll give you another example. I used to be around 155 pounds. Uh, Something happened with work, with life, with anxiety, with staying here until 3 or 4 in the morning when I was learning board repair, with business going up, with getting featured in the news, with the YouTube channel blowing up, where at the same height, I was not able to lift as much weight and somehow I went from the one, around the 150s to 160 to 188 to 190 pounds. Now, my personal trainer is somebody that I'll include as a number down below, really kind, really cool dude. And he, would, he told me, you know, here's what you need to do. I'm with you one hour, one hour, three times a week. There is the rest of the other 23 hours a day, the other six or seven days a week. I can't tell you what to do on that time. I'm going to tell you what you should be doing if you want these results. You know what to do. You're not dumb. You fix motherboards and run a business. You know exactly what you need to do. There's a reason you're not getting the results. And the reason was I just I wasn't disciplined. I just didn't like I knew what to do. I knew how to lift the weights. I know how to use an elliptical. I know how to go for a jog. I know how to use a rowing machine. I know how to not eat three to five burritos a day. There was one day where I remember just looking at myself and going, like, just cursing at myself in the mirror. That wasn't self-love. I wasn't particularly happy with where I was. I didn't say, you are overweight. You are 5'6", 190 pounds. Love yourself. No, I was, I was kind of pissed at myself. I was really mad. And what happened? A few months later, I lift more now than I did at 188 pounds. I weigh 155 to 156. I can run further. I can lift more. I feel healthier and I feel happier. My diet is cleaner. Everything. That didn't come from me going, I love you for who you are. That came from a little bit of hate. And here's the thing. Once I actually do what I needed to do, when I look in the mirror, it's not fake self-love. It's not a Hallmark card self-love. It's actual self-love because I actually changed. I actually became better at something. I put myself on a better path, whether for my business, for my social skills, or for my health. And sometimes I think that a little bit of self-hate might just get you somewhere. Most people, when they look in the mirror, they know what they're screwing up. Like You know what you could be doing better right now. You know what you probably should be doing to be a healthier person. You know what you should be doing so that you can do better at work or do better in business or be a better business person. You know what you should be doing so that you can have a better relationship with your wife, your husband, or your family members. It's just like, you don't do it. I can tell you that when I looked in the mirror at 188 to 190 pounds, I was not going to spend two hours a day on an elliptical after my regular weightlifting exercises. Stop eating bread, stop eating burritos, stop eating snacks, stop eating desserts. Cut out everything that I don't want and portion control myself while saying, I love myself. That's just, that wasn't something that I was going to do because those changes are miserable. Cutting bread out of your diet is miserable. Telling the person, I don't want croutons in my salad sucks. Not eating a burrito anymore sucks. And above all, spending two hours a day doing this at level 20, that's no fun. That's miserable. That's not something I'm going to do if I'm happy with where I am. That's something I'm going to do where I hate where I am. Same thing with talking to random people. I'm not going to walk up to random people as a socially awkward dude and go, hey, my name's Lewis. How was your experience here today? Ah, oh, that sucks. Yeah, the act- see, the reason you're, ex- the actual issue is just this little board. You don't need the entire display assembly. I don't know why they told you that. I can even show you. But by the way, I don't work here. Here's my card. You can meet me in the park. That's not something I'm going to do until I hit some sort of rock bottom in my life and I go, God damn, I hate the person in the mirror. I don't know if this is something that will work for you, but it's something that works for me. And this is my channel where I get to rant about shit that works for me. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.